Hey guys, Mike Loves Nature here. Today I'm coming to you with a video that you've all been probably waiting for from my channel for a bit, and that is my worm farm update. It's been about a year since I made the farm, and uh, I've learned a lot of things over that year. So I want to share with you my experience with it and uh, things I've learned. So here, I'm going to dig into the dirt a bit and hopefully you can see some of the babies before they run away and I'll see if uh, I can get a good shot of them. There was a piece of uh, banana here, so there were a whole bunch of them underneath it. As you can see, I don't think I got away. Let's see, there was a small one there, a real small one. So this would be a baby for sure. As you can see, try and get a, a good shot here. It's, it's pretty small as you can see, it's about the size of a, a fingernail. He's all balled up at the moment because he didn't like me digging him up. Oh, I dropped him. So this would be a, uh, a full adult here. That'd be like a fresh store bought one that we got recently. So seeing as I use these guys quite regularly to feed my oxalotls and sometimes my uh, my crayfish and uh, fish and other pets as a treat, um, I tend to stock this with worms every, um, I don't know, every few weeks. I'll throw another uh, batch of 20 in, but on top of that I don't think I ever go through it. Um, I, I tend to have more than I use at most points, so I'm, th I'm pretty much at the point now where uh, I've got enough babies in here that uh, I, I probably would need to go and stock it as much as I do. Is So seeing as I use these worms quite often for feeding my oxalotls, I um, tend to want to use mostly my larger worms to feed them because my oxalotls are quite big these days and I don't want to feed all my little worms to the oxalotls. I want them to grow big so then I can feed them bigger worms, right? So the way I've been treating this farm is I've been adding large worms every time I start running out of them and just paying attention to the state of everything else and uh, we've gotten over time uh, the babies take a very long time to grow so it takes quite a bit of time before you're gonna see large worms coming out of the like as large as the ones you're getting from the store anyway uh, coming out of this farm you'll start off very small and they don't grow very fast so it's a very long term thing like over about a year now I've got about half the size that uh, you would normally get at a store out of a fresh box so that's something you want to take into consideration this isn't something that is going to immediately be productive it's going to take a lot of time and uh, uh, big things for when it comes to food they absolutely love bananas and uh, leftover greens uh, you want to keep the water hydrated and you want to keep the dirt cold uh, you don't want to swamp them out, but you want to keep it so that at least at the bottom there's like a good mushy layer for them to hang out in if they want. Um, over time, all the stuff you put in there like leaf litter and all that other stuff will start to decay. So you do want to kind of give them a little bit um, more leaf litter over the time. And uh, there's really not a whole lot to maintaining them other than just keeping them cool and hydrated. If, it, if they start to dry out and you notice, you want to add more water and make sure it's cold water. They like it cold. Um, and take the chlorine out with a dechlorinator, an amphibian dechlorinator, I would say. And then, uh, you should be good. I just want to say everything in this video and everything I'm saying about these worms are just from my experience with my farm and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if worms grow faster, if you give them other foods or stuff like that. That is always a possibility. I haven't looked too much into that. Another thing I had to deal with um, that I don't think I touched on in the first video was the uh, leaf litter that I picked up from the forest had a lot of uh, like uh, little bugs in them. So if one thing you want to do before you make your farm and everything like that is uh, make sure that none of the like centipedes and other things that are going to actually hunt the worms are still in the leaf litter. I had to uh, pick them out for the first, I don't know, month or so and they were killing my worms and eating my worms for the first month or so and uh, it took a while to get them all out but if you take care of that before you make the farm it should be a lot better. Sorry I didn't mention that the first time, I didn't really notice until later. Um, again I'm, I'm only doing this from my experience on things. 
Thanks for tuning in to today's video. If you guys liked everything, uh, I tend to do a lot of these kind of like how-to videos and my, share a lot of my experiences with nature and my breeding of my animals and everything like that. Um, and I do like to try and help educate people on help taking care of their animals better. I don't know everything and I, I, I'm a strong advocate of you should really, you know, do due diligence, listen to me, listen to 500 other people and find what you think is, you know, the best thing to do. Um, because there's a lot of misinformation out there on how to take care of your pets and it sucks to learn the hard way. Uh, so it's definitely important to do your own research and do a lot of it because a lot of this stuff isn't fully, uh, fully researched. So you gotta really try hard in some cases to learn how to do the absolute best. Uh, I will say, often at pet stores, unfortunately, they don't know everything about the particular animals that you're trying to take care of. So you can ask them for advice, and sometimes they do know what they're talking about. I'm not saying they never do. There's a lot of people that do work at pet stores that are quite knowledgeable. Um, you just, you gotta bounce things off many sources of information. The more people you bounce information off of, the more you can try and find the things that all add up everything that everybody can agree on and try and work from there right and uh that is generally in essence the way i try and tackle how i take care of my pets and uh it's worked for the most part i haven't had any death for uh, quite some time um the only animal that has sadly passed was my uh my first chameleon but i learned slowly over the time that he had health issues from when he was a baby um, so uh, it was ended up being cancer that ended up taking him um, but he did get a good four years which is a decent lifespan for a chameleon so uh, I do miss him quite quite a bit because he was my first pet but um, hopefully he's moved on to better places I hope this uh, video was helpful uh, I hope you guys learned something uh, I hope I was able to shed some light on some of the questions that I was asked on the last video and um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day stay awesome